Hey everyone, welcome to the Guiding You Forward podcast presented by Mountain America Credit Union, where we talk about all things financial related. And you know this because you've already hit that notification bell and you've subscribed to our channel, right? So be sure to do that if you haven't, because today we're talking about fraud. And thankfully, Rob is with us. Hi, Rob. Hi, Kristalina. So a big one that I really want your subscribers and your viewers to know about is imposter scams. Okay. And there's a couple different flavors of imposter scams going okay. on right now. Um, one, uh, we'll, we'll call it maybe tech support. Okay. It's kind of a broad category. Yeah. So a lot of large companies um, don't have over the phone tech support. Um, right. I'm talking about your Amazons, your Googles, your Microsofts, right? You can't call somebody up and speak to somebody on the phone. So what the fraudsters will do is they'll kind of plant these false tech support numbers out online. So when you Google, you know, Amazon phone support, you get one of these false phone numbers. Okay. And then you call up this false Amazon support, tech support person or customer support person and um, you, whatever, whatever your problem is, and this is a, one of the red flags, whatever your problem is, they tell you that you're entitled to a refund. Oh. Yeah. Well, I want a refund, right. Rob. Yeah. And that it's sounds great. Yeah, and it's usually not a small amount, 500 bucks. Oh. Right? Yeah, that sounds wonderful. Sign me up, right? So what they will do is they will walk the person through downloading um, a remote access software on their computer they will actually get into the to the person's computer. They can download malware and viruses and all kinds of stuff. But then they'll have the person get on to their online and mobile branch for their financial institution. And uh, they will manipulate the code to make it appear that you got too much of a refund. So instead of getting $500, you got $50,000. And they'll, they'll be very aggressive and that this is your fault and you're, we're going to send the FBI after you and I'm going to get you arrested, right? And you could understand how that would make somebody panic. For sure. And so what they do is they say, well, the way that we can fix this is go down, go down to your local store and buy gift cards and buy X amount of gift cards and read me the code on the back of the gift card, because that's really what they want in order to redeem the gift card. And if that person does, does that, then they buy all these gift cards, they send them the codes, that's an authorized transaction. Not They didn't knowingly do it, but they authorized it. They used their debit card or their credit card to make that purchase. And so now when they find out that, oh, this isn't, this isn't real, this isn't legit. I really didn't have that, you know, put into my account. Then now they're out all of that money that they used to buy those gift cards. And by now those gift cards are long gone. Right, For exactly. Okay. And so the key there is, regardless of who you're talking to, if someone asks for remote access to your computer to fix something or to, for whatever reason, you should be highly, highly suspicious of that. Now, if we're talking about a work computer that you use for work and it's your, you know, it's your IT department and you know the person that you're talking to, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about a personal computer that someone's asking for remote access to and they can get remote access to your computer, your tablet, your phone, any one of those things. So okay. if somebody's asking for remote access to your computer, be very wary of that because okay. that, that's a big, that's a big thing to be, uh, to be concerned about. We also see situations where fraudsters impersonate representatives at financial institutions. Oh, wow. So they will send out just a blast text message to a bunch of phone numbers that they get on online, right? Okay. From, uh, it could be through a legitimate contact list. It could be from the dark web. It could be from a lot of different places, but they'll blast out this text message and the text message will say, there's been suspicious activity on your account at a Walmart in Kentucky, for example. And then it'll say, if this is you, reply yes. If this isn't you, reply no. Well, most people, um, and they're usually going to choose an area that wouldn't be normal for the area that they're blasting this text out to. Okay. But most people are going to reply, no, that's not me. So now they know they've got a legitimate phone number. They call the person up at that phone number claiming to be the representative 
of the financial institution to help them uh, resolve this unauthorized transaction that occurred on their account. Okay. Now what they do, and, and this is the key thing, the, the fraudster will say, before I help you, I need to verify you. I need you to verify yourself with your username and password to your, to your mobile branch. Oh, interesting. And so then they, now they have access to their username and password. Okay. And they can do all kinds of mischief with that. So realize that when someone, whoever initiated the call, the onus is on that person to verify themselves. So if, so if you, as a consumer, call mm -hmm. your financial institution, you initiated that call, naturally the financial institution is going to ask you to verify yourself. And so in that circumstance, they would ask for your code word or for a PIN or okay. something like that. But not my username and password. But they would, yes, very good. So if, if you call up your financial institution and let's say you, you leave a message or, you know, someone says, well, we'll have to call you back. Yeah. You've still now initiated that contact. So if somebody calls you back, they're probably going to ask you to verify yourself in some way. Okay. But, but this, but this just out of the blue, and it wouldn't necessarily just be from your financial institution. If you have somebody calling you out of the blue and they claim to be from the FBI or from the IRS or from the social security administration, right? And, and they start asking you for your social security number or your, your username and password. Okay. That's a full stop right there. That's, that's, that's a line you do not cross because they need to verify themselves to you. Okay. okay. Not so, the other way around. Not the other way the around. The Social Security Administration already knows my social. Right. Yes. Yes, right? absolutely okay. they do. Yeah. Okay. They don't need your Social Security number. Now, for example, at Mountain America, we do send text messages out to verify suspicious activity. Yeah. I have a very dedicated team that works long and hard hours to try to identify fraudulent transactions occurring on people's accounts. And frequently they will contact our account holders, our members, and ask them about suspicious transactions. Okay. In those circumstances, we are never asking for information. We already have all the information that we need. We have the account number. We have the card number. We have all of that information. We are only going to give information and ask the account holder to verify that information. So for example, we'd call you up and we'd say, hey, Kristalina, this is Rob with Mountain America Credit Union. Hey, there's some unusual activity on your account. I just wanted to verify an unusual transaction with you. Do you, do you have a few minutes? Okay. So yes, I've, yes, absolutely, right? Yeah. Um, on your credit card ending one, two, three, four, there was a transaction for $500 at a Walmart in Kentucky. Was that you? No, right. of course not. I'm I'm in Utah. Right, right? exactly. Yeah. And that's usually how we would expect that conversation to go. Yeah. But you might be traveling. That's or, true. Or yes. something like that. Okay. So, um, so again, we're giving information. The last four of the card number, we're giving the transaction information. Now, it would be totally appropriate. And actually, I would applaud anyone who does this, that if you get that phone call and you say, well, how do I know that you're calling from Mountain America? Right? Or how do I know that you're calling from this financial institution? Yeah. Because my team is equipped to handle that. And they, they would applaud that person and say, thank you for being so cautious. Thank you for being careful. I can validate that I'm calling from Mountain America Credit Union because I can tell you that the last transaction that occurred on this card in Utah was Smith's for $24.43 right? okay. or something like that. And uh, there's, there's several different things that we would do in that situation. Rob, thank you so much for teaching us about imposter scams today. And thanks to all of you for joining also. Um, be sure to tune in on the next episode of Guiding You Forward.